I got beat up on a bus by a girl when I was 14 because I didn't wow. fight back. I didn't know right? what to do. I wasn't sure if I should hit her back. Yeah. Um, when I lived in uh, Newton, in Newton South, we would go to, I think it was Round Meadow, which was the um, the middle school. I think yeah. that's what it was. Okay. And we would walk across the field because my sister was going to the middle school and I was in uh, ninth grade mm. and she was in eighth grade. So I would go and take the bus with her because yeah. like the bus was earlier or something. I forget what it was. Okay. So I went over and something happened when I got on the bus and there was this girl who like was this tough girl, smoked cigarettes, she had a leather well, jacket on. Newton tough girls. Yeah. And I don't remember what happened. I don't mm. remember what the, the conversation was. Yeah. But she either decided I was in the wrong seat or whatever. So she just starts wailing on me. Like it wasn't even like it wasn't even, it wasn't even like I didn't argue back. It was just yeah. like she just started punching me. Yeah. And then this little guy who was like who wound up be my friend. His name is Muggsy Malone. He mm. wound up being uh my he, he later went on, I think he was a politician yeah. at one point in time. But he, he became my friend. Yeah. yeah, but he was this tiny little guy. He was like in fifth grade. Yeah. And uh in like the girl beats me up and, mm -hmm. and then and then he comes over, he goes, I ain't fucking afraid of you either. I'm like, Oh Jesus <laughs> <laughs> it's like what the fuck like is he that? jumped on her it, side against yes, you 100 percent. yeah it was wow. like one of those things where i was like my god i gotta learn how to fight it's like yeah. really what turned me into a martial artist it's like yeah. i was tired of being terrified mm -hmm. this girl kicked my ass and yeah. i didn't even fight back i was just like covering my head up and no, she's just terrible fucking, with a leather jacket on her fucking cigarette mm. <laughs> What is her life that she needed to go right to DEFCON 5? Well, like she that, wound you know? up being the girlfriend of the guy who's the toughest guy on the wrestling team, mm. which I joined the next season. So thank God I didn't swing back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would have been, <laughs> would have beat that would have been horrible. This guy, Mark Collins, mm -hmm. who was uh, like the, the neighborhood tough guy, who wasn't even a small guy. Mm -hmm. uh, wasn't even a big guy, rather. He was a small guy, but he was just fucking intense. And he was a really good wrestler. Yeah, I lived in Newtonville, which was like on, oh, yeah. right along the highway, mm -hmm. and I, right next to Nonantum, which was all those Irish and, and mm -hmm. Italian kids. And so that's who I went to junior high school with and mostly high school. But there was uh, a lot of really terrifying kids. There's a lot of scary kids. Well, um, blue-collar communities. Like, I was in Upper Falls. Yeah. In Newton, Upper Falls. There was a lot of fucking... A lot of drinking. And yeah. So they were, everybody would hang out by Echo Bridge. You right. Echo Bridge? Yeah, sure. That's where my house was. Okay. My house was right next to Echo Bridge. Yeah, Newton had a lot of, hang, like Cabot, I went to Cabot School, elementary school, and Cabot Park was a hang. Mm -hmm. And to cross Cabot Park, sometimes you'd get these guys that would just converge on you. Mm -hmm. And they would <laughs> play games with you. And you didn't know what was going on. Right. Hey, kid, come here, come here. And then all of a sudden you're in the middle of the park and you're like, fuck. Yeah. I remember once his kids, he said he, he had a hundred dollar bill for some reason. And he said, we're, we're going to play this game. And they're all surrounding me. And he puts the hundred dollar bill on my, on my hand and he gives me a cigarette. And he says, if you can burn a hole in his head all the way through, I'll give you the hundred dollar bill. And I'm Whoa. like, and I was like, I don't, want, <laughs> I don't want to do it. And Jesus like, Christ. No, try it. Try it. And I was trying to do it and it hurt like fuck and i don't remember how that ended like i just remember that terrifying and they're all staring at me and one time some kids had a uh, a cup of puke it was like a <laughs> coffee cup <laughs> with puke and he said can you drink this whole thing uh, if you drink this whole thing we'll give you a beer that was that thing oh god <laughs> and these the guys puke and i'll give you a beer yeah these guys just <laughs> scared me and then when I grew up, I hung out with those kids and would smoke cigarettes. That's where I learned to smoke cigarettes in that park. And oh, I drank wow. my first beer in that park. Uh, but there was kids. There was a kid named Mike who was the toughest kid in Newton. He was just a fucking terrifying person. And there was one point where okay, the, so this kid named David Russell, he was his family lived in Boston. Remember, I don't know if you guys had Metco kids, the, the kids that were bused from yes. Boston into our schools, yeah. black kids from all black kids from Boston who were bused into our school system. It wasn't part of that bus bossing Boston thing. It was out to the suburbs. Right. And these were kids that got up at four o'clock in the morning to go to school. You know, they were living a particular life and coming <clears> out to this suburb. And some of them were my friends. One of them was Ronnie DeVoe of uh, Bell Biv DeVoe. No shit. Yeah, I went to high school with him. Wow. And uh, I knew him since like junior high school through high school. He was a nice kid. And when he was in what he, the first edition or new, new edition, mm -hmm. they used to come get him in a limousine. <clears throat> and people would say, shout racist shit at the 
Bobby Brown and all these guys would be in the middle of the scene in, in high school. It was so racist. It was so crazy. Yes. Whoa. So David Russell was a Medco kid, and his family's house burnt down in Boston. And a family in Newton, actually friends of mine, they had a rental unit, and they let the Russells live there. So it was like there's a black family living in Newtonville. It's a big deal. And everyone was into because it was all liberal teachers. Everybody was into like we're hosting this family because they lost their home. So all of a sudden David Russell's living in Newton. He's not just going to school there. And one day um, Mike and his group confront David Russell in the park and they go, hey, listen, we, we're really happy you're here. We want to show you this bench right here. This is your bench. And they had literally painted it black. And they painted one of the swings black. They said, this is the Russell swing. This is the Russell bench. You can use it many time you want. Whoa. And I remember I heard that story and I went to the park that day and it was a black bench and a black <laughs> swing. And they were there. I mean, I remember I went back when I was in my 20s <clears throat> and it was still a little kind black. Of black. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was Newton, Massachusetts. <laughs> it's crazy. Kids were latchkey kids back then. Yeah. Remember those days you were just like. Oh, your parents were. They work let you out there's no parents yeah. they come home my mom would come i was raised by a single mom she had four kids and worked so she'd come home at seven thirty, eight o'clock rush hour traffic just exhausted yeah and but i'd come home make my own lunch and often yep. dinner yep yeah um sometimes i'd make something for my mom you know yeah and, uh, yeah home alone all day all, all day, day. Yep. yeah out on a... the streets out on the streets nobody knew where you were there was no cell phones you just wandered around Yep. And just hope you didn't die. Yeah. Because every now and then someone would die. Someone yeah, would die kids in a would drunk die. driving accident yes. or something. Every, yeah. I think every year in my in uh, my high school, there would be a page in the mm-hmm. yearbook for the kid that got killed in a yeah. drunk driving. Yeah. 